Welcome back to another video. We are talking about the UFL and uh, with 60% of the season in the books and week 7 around the corner, which we've done our predictions for, by the way, if you want to go check those out. It's time to talk about season awards here and uh, also get a sort of an outlook as we're nearing the playoffs. Smokey, how are you doing today oh man i am good uh better than um i guess any one of these guys who thought they were going to be in the running for the mvp that is not two names i guess i can't really mention them right now so uh anybody but the two names oh. i will be mentioning later okay i have two do you have two names to mention i do yes i also have two names to mention but i have one uh honorable name to mention mm. as well which we'll, I guess we'll get there. Well, let's do power rankings first. So after six weeks, we have a pretty good idea, I think. At the start of the season, if you remember, uh, our power, power rankings like we went wildly different. There was a time when you had the unfeated Renegades, I think, at number two. Three. Or at three. Yeah. At three, yeah. I remember that occurred once. Listen, and, uh, well... <laughs> you, you know what's crazy is that I've been listening to... Uh, shows here and there the renegades are moving back up people's power rankings without ever winning a game <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's that <laughs> has any owen whatever team ever not been last in any power i don't rankings? think so i don't think so <laughs> but they're, hard they're to, doing hard it to imagine it. <laughs> well they have the prime chance to win this week and move up straight spots with the showboats in the power rankings potentially Mm -hmm. This week, as if if they can pull it off against Memphis, but how are your power rankings looking here in the UFL? Well, I, I kind of foreshadowed that I did move them up just a little bit because, I, regardless of their record, their offense is just too good. Luis Perez is just too good to be in last place. You are the passing leader of the entire league. You are the second-ranked offense in the entire league. Now, there's something that's probably never happened before. How can you be number two in total offense for the entire league, yet have zero wins? Has that ever happened in the history of football before? <laughs> that somehow... I, hard, hard to yeah, I mean... Maybe well, I, I was gonna say maybe the grits blitz the Falcons of '77 when they had the uh, number one ranked defense and the dead last offense in the entire league. Uh, but then again, they went 500, which that's how that should work out, right? You should go yeah. 500. Yeah. Yet the Renegades have zero wins and the second best offense. I don't know. It makes no Through sense. Through six weeks. Yeah. Through six weeks. Yeah. You, you score so many points, it's, almost, it's hard to avoid winning a game. Here <laughs> I right know. It's, it's like they're trying to lose games at this point. It's like Perez is the only one that is trying to win games, and the rest of the team has said, no, we do not want to win games. I, I don't know. It makes no sense. But uh, we all have to agree that the Stallions are still number one, and the Battle Hawks are still number two. That could change after this this week uh if, if you listen to our predictions i don't plan on that changing this week but it is a possibility so those guys Intent. are probably going to stay at number yeah. number two number three for right now is the panthers the brahmas dropped down because um because they took that loss and with quentin dormandy i don't see them finishing in the top three for sure so i got the panthers at number three i had to put the defenders at number four because they just beat the Brahmas, and that knocks the Brahmas all the way down to number five, where they were number three last week. Number six, I have the Renegades, because Luis Perez is just better than the Showboats and the Roughnecks, and that follows up seven and eight, Showboats and Roughnecks. Remind me, did Luis Perez beat the Roughnecks when he played the Roughnecks? No, he didn't. But uh, Well, actually, cool. I will say this. Luis Perez did. The rest of the team did not. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. I didn't know they were scored. I, I did not know that quarterbacks were scored by themselves. I guess Aaron Rodgers won six Super Bowls in the last five years. I just didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the team he was on never, it happened to never, you know? I, I guess that that's what it must have been. Uh, that's okay. That's fair. I didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that that's how it worked. Okay. <laughs> sounds, sounds good to me. Uh -huh. All right. Stallions won, Battlehawks two, locker in top two teams, right? Uh, probably the championship game. Couldn't be better for me. I love both teams. Panthers at three. Mm-hmm. I will put the Brahmas above the defenders. Give me the Brahmas at four. 
defenders at five. The defenders are the classic 500 team. In fact, I want to say they're going to end the season five and five. They're flip flopping all over the place. Good big game followed by bad game and bad game followed by good game. Doesn't quite get it done. If the Brahmas can manage to win two more games, they're playing the Roughnecks this week. Go figure. I think the Brahmas will cr crawl over the finish line and get stomped out by the Battlehawks. But to me, they're just that slight bit ahead of the defenders to do their early good start. Boats at six for me. Um, not much of a difference here with the Showboats and the Roughnecks. I think the Roughnecks look a bit more inept offensively, so they're harder to watch. I guess that's why I'm giving the Showboats the point or the, the, the jump above the Roughnecks because they're more watchable, I think. Listen, the Renegades are 0 6. They're not, they don't belong anywhere but in the bottom. <laughs> they have not beaten another team. It's that simple. Yeah. And they are playing, they've played six teams. They're playing the last team now. It's the Showboats. It's one of the worst. Now, I'm not going to give the spoiler of what we predicted because people can go watch the other video, but. They have to win if they want to not be eighth, yep. right? We can all agree that if the Roughnecks lose this, they are last in the power rankings forever <laughs> until next season. And no one can say anything else about that. <laughs> you mean the uh, Renegades? they've officially lost to... Yes, the Renegades. Yeah. They've lost the entire league if they don't win this one against Memphis. Yeah. So... That's that's how we're that's how we're sticking. With, I, think. <laughs> I need to I need to have the Brahmas over the defenders. I think the defenders probably, if they faced off, should be favored slightly. But their matchups are harder for the Brahmas. It's easier to get over the finish line. They kind of carved that um, that lead out at the start of the season, and it's going to carry them over. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I have to think about that. I don't see these power rankings changing much anymore. By the way, I think the top two are very clear. The bottom two or three can be shuffled around. Other than that, I'm uh, I'm pretty confident we're going to stay. Or do you see any team that's a big surprise, either positive or negative, uh, over the last three four weeks here? No, not necessarily. I expect it to end pretty much like this. Uh, now I will say, if the Renegades win this week, they can't really be below the showboats right uh you know what i should have even put the Difficult. showboats at number eight i don't even know why i think the roughnecks because of that defense is better than the showboats even so i should be knocking the showboats down to number eight to tell you the truth and probably the roughnecks still should be at number six the roughnecks then then the renegades and then the showboats and dead last but if the renegades do lose then they have no other place regardless of how much offense they can put out there if their defense is just that bad then they can't be anywhere uh, other than the eighth at this point because you've been beaten by every team in the league uh i don't every know every single team such an anomaly though like how do you have the second ranked offense in the entire league yet you have a leading passer too yeah exactly how do you do that without winning a single game it just makes absolutely well, no sense Terrible defense, terrible special teams. The San Diego Chargers once had the number one offense and the number one defense in the NFL. And they did not make the playoffs because their special team was that bad. <laughs> that's how That's how severely one What year was that? Uh, uh, must have uh, mid-2000s. Oh, okay. Uh, like it was the LaDainian Tomlinson time. Mm. I, I have to dig it up, but it was, it was mid-2000s, not that long ago. That's how important it is to have a full team union that where everyone can kind of carry their weight, at least a little bit. Because one terrible unit is going to drag you down. And that's the defense. And to a lesser degree, the special teams of the Renegades now, even with the leading passer. Mm -hmm. And I guess that gets us into the second part of the conversation, leading passer type. <laughs> um, this league's going to have an MVP as it last last two years as well. Of course, following Alex Magoo, Go Stallions. What do you think about the MVP conversation this year? You had, oh, you said you had two serious yeah, mentions. Yeah. So, do you want to reveal them? Yeah, I will. Uh, and I will say one more thing about Luis Perez is that if you guys would have won some of these games, you know, if if you had two losses right now, Luis Perez is absolutely in the conversation. There's no way you can't be. You're the leading passer. This you've put together a phenomenal offense. It's just horrible that your team sucks that bad. 
and you have Bob Stoops as a coach. So there's that. Luis Perez should be in this conversation, but you can't be because your team sucks, and that's a horrible situation. Uh, bad for Luis Perez. Well, at the beginning of the year, I would have thought Case Cookus would probably be in this conversation also, but he absolutely is not. There are two names that are up there. A lot of people would have thought Jordan Te'amu also. Right now, one name stands at the top, and one name is knocking on the door. The reason number two is only knocking on the door, because he hasn't started every game of this season. He was bouncing back and forth with Matt Corral. That's Adrian Martinez. Adrian Martinez is in the number two spot for me right now. If he finishes the season as the starter and we don't keep playing this flip-flop game, the 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 quarterback hokey pokey that Skip Holtz likes to do, and we, we keep changing him out, he's not going to have a chance at this. But right now, if he finishes the season playing exactly like he has these past two weeks, He's going to be in that conversation. But A.J. McCarron will have to lose it somehow. A.J. McCarron right now stands above the entire field. And if as long as he plays up to par with his standards for the rest of the season, there's no way anyone is going to beat him. It's just not possible because most of these quarterbacks have been changed out, like I said, anyway. And, um, yeah, there's, there's no other quarterback starting right now. That's going to be in that. Maybe maybe a running back. I know you had mentioned uh, John Lovett earlier. Maybe uh, somebody like that. Uh, uh, Jacob Sailors on A.J. McCarron's team has had a really good week uh, or a really good season. But he had a bad week last week. So I don't know if, if that takes him out of the running. Ricky Person, maybe. Even though C.J. Marable is technically the number one. Uh, Ricky Person has carried the number one duties over the past few weeks, but uh, I don't think there's any tight end that will ever win this, even though Cody Latimer and Jay Sternberger may, maybe should be in consideration, but it'll never happen. Uh, so, yep, right now, it's A.J. McCarron in the lead. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I couldn't have said it any better what you said. It's McCarron and Martinez. It's a two-horse race at this point, with McCarron, to me, getting the advantage uh, by for having by far the most passing touchdowns, having started every game, um, over 100 passer rating. Now, Martinez has uh, the rushing game as another like point of his, his strength, which should be included. He's the second leading rusher in the in the UFL. Now, that's a big deal, especially for a guy who hasn't played every game and still is a competitive passer. So he can uh, possibly take the lead this this week if he has a convincing win and performance uh, against McCarron uh, this day at home in Birmingham. But here's a dark horse name I wanna I wanna throw out there. And this is not just a hipster pick. This is because this is like poss This is actually possible. How about Jake Bates, a kicker <laughs> for MVP of the league? This guy scored 36 points. Yeah. Listen, 36 points. He's kicking 50, 60 yarders all over the place. He just last weekend came off of a five field goal performance, winning the game single-handedly, including a 60 yarder against Arlington and saving the Panthers. But if the if the Panthers make the playoffs, this is the single reason why they do. Because they, they did not have a consistent quarterback. They did not have a consistent running game. Their defense has been well, okay, but not as good as they were last year. This is the best player on the team by far. Mm -hmm. And the team's most valuable player. And that's not a meme or a joke. or uh, I the, No, the, that's not a figure of speech. Jake Bates is the most valuable player on the Panthers. Because if, if he was replaced by like your average UFL kicker, they'd have won like one or two games at most. Maybe just one. Because their wins were close, too. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy is the team's <laughs> MVP, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. And he's going to be in the NFL. I don't have any doubt about that. There's too many kickers that he could replace. And it's not, you know, there's no difference in skill level from kicking in the UFL to kicking in the NFL. If no. you can hit 60-yard field goals, you can hit 60-yard field goals yeah. regardless of what league it's in. So yeah. this guy is going to... UFL kickers have been great and yeah. him at the top. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be back in the Absolutely. NFL. No doubt about it. He's definitely. he's definitely the best player on the team. I've been saying that hyperbolically since like week two that this guy is the MVP of the league. Don't think he's going to win. I mean, it's just way too um 
out of the ordinary for a kicker to win. Uh, and A.J. McCarron would have to really do something. A.J. McCarron and Adrian Martinez would really have to take a downward slide for that to happen, just because no one's going to vote for a kicker for MVP. But he may actually be the most valuable player in the league. <laughs> There's yeah, yeah. He, he just might be. He just might be. And you know what? Back in the leather helmet era, kickers won MVPs. Oh yeah. Even in, in the NFL, he used because people used to play multiple positions. Kickers was one of them. Yeah. But kickers used to be a big deal mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. I'll say, bring it back. Why not? Mm -hmm. Well, my two, the two quarterbacks of my two favorite teams are currently vying for MVP, so <laughs> that's why not. But if that weren't the case, if this was like Jordan Tiamu and some. The case cookers or something, two players I don't care that much about. I would, I would be rooting for the kicker for sure. But that's uh, that's our that's our piece, our power rankings, our MVPs. You at home, please let us know what you think about both of these. Anything that you have grievously disagree with, uh, or is there even a fifth name in the MVP conversation that has not been mentioned? We had Bates, Lovett, and of course the two quarterbacks. Is there anyone else that maybe comes to mind? A dark horse candidate that can come in. Uh, and kind of swoop it up over the last four weeks. So let us know what you think in that regard. Thank you for watching, and we're going to see you in the next one. Deuces. Listen now, we the top around town. Alex threw the ball to smoke for a touchdown. Huh? It's fourth down, and you don't really want no more. We've been winning from the door. You should check the